Hello all, this is House Arrest Pro. We are back with what promises to be our final episode of Until Dawn for Newbies. So yeah, I'm gonna try to wrap this thing up today uh, again. Because we found all of the clues on the twins, uh, the Wendigo who popped up in front of Josh there at the last, uh, on the last episode in the ending, recognized him uh, and he recognized her as being a Hannah, the Hannah Wendigo. Uh, so she did not kill him. So at this point, we still have everyone alive. We're gonna try our best to keep it that way. Thank you so much for tuning back in. Let's uh, get this kicked off, shall we? All right, so definitely still have Matt still alive. That's good. We had not heard from him in quite some time. Ever since he shot the flare at, uh, I'm guessing what, now the Wendigo. I like this little lantern. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Jesus, Jesus. So glad these two found each other. Maybe they can help each other out of these mines now. Jess look like she's been through absolute hell. Yeah. Come on, Jess. All right, let's see, girl, if we can't help each other out of this little hell hole that we're in here. This way and this way. Definitely got something else over here. Just put a cave in here. That was me. What? I fell through that roof. You fell this far? Jesus. There's two of us. What? I fell off a goddamn fire tower down here. You're kidding me. Another totem. Mm. Some more burning. It looked like might, but I'm not really sure. Doing our little crisscross weave pattern here. Trying to make sure we find everything that can be found. Alright, let's continue. Definitely not out of this safely yet. That we could still have numerous people die, so we gotta play this game correctly. Let's hide. Come on, Jess. Jeez. This is hurt. That's another big thing. If you were to try to run ahead there, 
Uh, you have to keep in mind that Jess is in really no shape to run. So if you had tried to run ahead there, she would have been caught by the Wendigo and killed. Jess, come on. So very important decisions being made here. Again, you don't want to abandon her, you want to hide with her. Those two are safe. Sam's still trying to climb her way out of this joint. Oh, you know we're going the fast route. this way just to make sure we didn't leave anything behind by going to the right instead of to the left which it doesn't appear that we did okay just making sure again I'm trying to uh, trying to find as many of the uh, totems and clues for you guys as, as humanly possible totem here all right we're gonna look back to our left now that we went to the right, we found a totem, so I'm just going to check on our left-hand side to see if there was anything to be found over here. I don't think we're going to get this game where it's 100% complete, where we've absolutely found everything. As a matter of fact, I know we're not because we're missing a couple of clues that we somehow skipped over, and I know we can't go back to find those. So. All right, doesn't appear there's anything over here. freezing cold water in the middle of a snowstorm there
on, somebody let me in. Holy hell. Mike. Oh gosh. You look terrible. <laughs> Gonna look worse if we stay out here. Come on. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Josh would say, Cochise. Well, I'm just going to apparently walk right by you. Cabin full of windigos. Very difficult, guys, but you gotta not move through all this. Super, super still. So Mike's devising a little plan here. Looks like Sam knows exactly what he's thinking. Very important you get the order of events correctly in this last series, otherwise you could freaking kill everybody. Have to be sure not to move when it says don't move. Everybody clear out of the house one at a time. Make sure everybody gets out that you still have alive. You're gonna want to save Mike. Hey! Which is gonna allow Emily to run out. Chris is already out. Don't move, don't move, don't move. God, I hate this part. This is nerve wracking. You can fuck up the whole game right here. Alright, so Chris is out, Emily's out. We're gonna hide. 
If you run for the switch too early, you'll kill everybody inside. Now Ashley's out. Remember, Jess and Matt are already out. So the only ones left here are Mike and I. Don't move, don't move. Gonna wanna hide one more time, which is gonna give Matt, or uh, Mike, the opportunity to get out. Get the hell out of here, bro. I got this. And again, one little misstep here, one little movement, she gets caught, she gets killed. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone made it out with their lives. the ending credits here all right we did it uh, the old man I, uh, I I don't know how to describe him I mean you said you thought he was stalking you at first did anyone else in your group think that well yeah <laughs> is it possible they could have killed him what no no, you, you, you don't understand. Don't you understand? If he attacked you... He saved my life. And I watched him die. I heard Jessica. I don't know how or why she was down there. I know I heard her. He held it right up to my face. Right here, right in front of my nose. And he oh, shot God. Me. He almost shot me, the prick. Still People bitching about die for however long and you think you know him, but man, this one really takes the cake. You're a real piece of work, chick. There, and I could have done something. I tried to do something. It wasn't good enough. How did you end up in the mines? I was <sighs> carried and taken and what did you see? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. There's your list of cast right there, guys. Hayden, Prince, Harry, Peter, Stormare. You wanted to hurt us. Yeah, he, and I thought he was the one who attacked Jess. I thought we were close. After his sisters disappeared, he'd come and talk to me. He said I was the only one who understood him. I thought, I thought we had a connection. If you need someone to talk to. I'm fine. Sometimes, after a traumatic experience. I said I'm fine. Know what all you guys are thinking. I, what about Josh? I stabbed him and I tried to get away, but I didn't know. I swear I didn't know. Didn't know? Who did you stab? Oh, I, I stabbed the maniac. I didn't know it was Josh, but then he was the psycho. And how was I supposed to know Josh had all the sauce and the gun and, oh, my God. Where's Matt? Is he okay? Are they done looking at him? I'm just a little worried because, you know, I'm his girlfriend. Did he tell you that? I mean, I probably wasn't his favorite person there for a couple minutes, but he knows how devoted I am to him. He knows. 
he said he knows, right? Ah, well, maybe at least brought them too closer. Told her she tried to help you. <sighs> she said she heard you calling out. <sighs> Not me. Mike. What do you um. remember? He came for me. I did. He did. <laughs> he came for you? Where is he? Did he make it? So I think if nothing else, it may have helped. Don't listen to me. I don't care if you believe me or not. It doesn't matter because you will. You need to go down to the mines. What's in the mines, Sam? <coughs> I've seen what's down there. And I'd give anything to unsee it. I think it may have helped uh, Mike and Jess's relationship. And it, uh, it may have even helped uh, Matt and Emily's relationship. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Very, very cool game. Um, I'm glad it wasn't only a decision-based game. There are some games that, you know, that's pretty much all it was, was a decision. I'm glad they added the fast action live action the button pushing deal uh gave you the ability to control the characters you know as far as walking around and stuff like that it could have very easily been something to take you out of the atmosphere if you didn't have as much control as you did uh, if you get what i'm saying if it was only pressing buttons and making decisions then that's not as engulfing to me as having it where you can actually control the characters and they did just enough of that I think to keep you to keep you there to keep you in that situation with them again one of my favorite horror games don't know that I would put it in my top five it would be really really close to making it in my top five but definitely most definitely in my top ten I love the fact that they had real actors. Uh, it definitely helped with the story and the voice acting of the game not to be as corny and cheesy and terrible as some. Even though it did kind of have its cheesy spots, like where uh, Mike and Jess are on their way to the cabin and they literally can talk about nothing but, you know, little sexual innuendos that part kind of gets crazy after a while but in the end very well made uh, good character actors good storyline I like the fact that there were actually different aspects of it so seems like if you like yes I'll say it's somewhat predictable in that as you start finding clues and figuring things out like you're like oh I know now Josh is behind it and da 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 but then once you think you have it completely figured out like you don't realize that there's a whole other aspect of it that Josh can't be behind you know what I'm saying so and again all that is subject subjective because if you don't find those clues if you don't do everything that we did to help you figure out that Josh is behind it all. Like I do remember the first time I played it, okay, I had not found uh, hardly any of the clues. I mean, I had found some here and there, but definitely not enough to figure out exactly what was going on. So when, you know, the quote unquote killer pulls off his clown mask and it was Josh, I was legitimately surprised. I'm not going to say I was shocked because I did have my suspicions, but I was definitely surprised uh, because I had just not found enough of the clues to lead me to think that, you know, he would have anything to do with that. And uh, then, like I said, once I had thought, okay, well, now that we know it's Josh and I thought, oh, I've completely have everything figured out and there turned out to be another whole aspect completely with the Wendigo so it, you know it does it does well at keeping you on your toes every time you think you've got it figured out maybe you don't and uh, just overall very good horror game very well made 
And I know it was a AAA title. It was supposed to be very well made, but there are times, in my opinion, that uh, AAA titles can have a lot of hoopla behind them before they are released and then let you down, not be nearly as good as they're supposed to be and not live up to their expectations. Just like there are a lot of times that small indie horror games that, you know, aren't technically supposed to be just great games surprise people and end up being really really great games uh such as like outlast i mean outlast was not outlast was not a game like you know your resident evils or silent hill or even like this uh and it still managed to be one of the best horror games ever made in my opinion Outlast 2 right there in the same boat. I think they probably put a little bit more time and development and money behind Outlast 2 because of the success that Outlast 1 had. Um, so, yeah, that's probably one that we'll be playing very soon. It may even be the next series we do. Not exactly sure where I'm going to move from here, but if you've never played Outlast, whew. It is definitely in my top five horror games ever made, probably in my top three. So yeah, again, I know there's a lot of people watching this thinking, you know, well, what about Josh? Well, that's what we're waiting on. I want to show you guys what about Josh. But uh, again, this game, you know, it can be super frustrating because in my opinion, like, especially with the decision that Ashley is faced with when she's down in the mines late in the game where I told you if you open that hatch, you die. There is nothing really there to warn you that that's what's going to happen uh if you if you look in that hatch and so i think a lot of people probably did open that hatch and lose ashley there and i think that was i know i did on my first playthrough and like i said i know markiplier did on his first playthrough so i can only imagine that a lot of others did as well and to be quite honest there's just there's not enough to really warn you that that's a huge decision there and it's so far into the game that it's definitely enough to piss you off badly uh, if you were to have that happen there, which uh, I was I was super pissed when it happened to me the first playthrough. Also, on my very first playthrough, I did not know that we were supposed to disagree with Emily as Matt about going to the fire tower and since it was initially his thought like if you'll notice in that whole scene Matt is the one who finds the map Matt is the one who points out look there's a fire tower here and then Emily says well I think we should go there so I thought okay well we should agree we found the map it was our idea we're the one who mentioned something about the fire tower so I agreed at that point <clears throat> okay so then fast forward we get to the fire tower uh and even though there's that totem that tells you okay emily should give the flare gun to matt which i did i had no idea he was just going to turn around and shoot it up in the air right then and there and so my very first playthrough not only did i lose ashley down in the mines but i lost matt because he turned around shot the flare up into the sky there uh, then later was attacked by the Wendigo and had no defense against him uh, was because he had no ammunition in his flamethrower anymore and so he died on my first playthrough and while I love the idea behind there being yes you can lose certain characters here and there and you have to make the right decisions I hate the fact that there are such uh, little warnings about what decisions you should make all right here we go with josh's story Survivor. 
one survivor for me. Is that? Oh, fuck. Stay back! Stay back! No, no! Stay back! <laughs> so Josh had resorted to cannibalism and began his transformation into the Wendigo. So, but yeah, that's my overall wrap up of the game. Um, like I said, the, the one complaint I have is there's not enough warning as to the decisions you're supposed to make. I would say a good, probably 90% of people who played through this the first time not knowing what to do, probably lost Matt in some form or another because they either did not hand off the flare gun to Emily, they did not disagree with Emily as far as going to the fire tower, or they turned around once they got up there and shot the flare into the air, leaving him helpless against the Wendigo when it attacks him. Uh, and to me, there's just not enough guidance to, to let you know that you need to make all those decisions in order to keep him safe. And uh, probably the same with Ashley there down in the basement. Uh, the don't move controls as far as keeping the little blue light in its little area, that is definitely one of the most difficult things to do during the game. Uh, and I failed at that several times, especially if you have somewhat shaky hands like I do. So the one way I always manage to get past that, just a little pro gamer tip for you guys, is I always, like I've got this little table set beside me when I, when I play my games. And so when I get to those areas and I know they're upcoming, I'll actually put the controller down right there on the table to make sure that it does not move because it can be difficult. It really can. As far as the fast action buttons, those can be difficult, but if you've played around as much on PlayStation or whatever your you know console or whatever you're playing with, then uh, those are definitely passable. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This has been Until Dawn for Noobs. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, not exactly sure which series we'll do next, but I'll leave that as a you know upcoming surprise for you guys. So. Thank you so much. Please like, subscribe, ring that bell. Also share this channel with any like-minded people you may know in, the, in order to help grow our little family here. And until next time, guys, take care of yourselves and each other.